This work can be challenging, and I'm always looking for ways to make it less challenging. So I'm always thinking of procedures, concepts, and techniques that will help me when I'm at the bench. And I rely on those to help me work more efficiently, more accurately, and get to the truth of the problem as quickly as possible. So I've got an idea how to help with flute padding, and it's very simple. Let me show you. When checking the pads for coverage on the flute, whether you're using a leak light or a feeler gauge, I find it's really helpful to mark the leaks right on the key. And I do this with my Sharpie pen. So I found a leak in this area here, and I'm marking the outside boundaries of where that leak occurs. Now some people do this on a piece of paper, but I find it's less confusing to have this written directly on the key. There's no confusion later where that leak is. I'll even go a step further, and if I have a sense of how deep that leak is, I'll write the number on the area. So in this case, I've written a number three, indicating I'm going to put a three thousandths of an inch thick shim in that area. I could go on and mark all my pads for that matter. I might have found a leak here and here. Maybe this was a one thousandths leak, and this is a two thousandths. Over here, I found a four thousandths leak. Now these marks come off later very easily with a little Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, so this is not uh, in any way going to be left on the instrument when you hand it back to the client. Now that I've got my leaks marked on the key cups, I'm ready to dis disassemble the instrument and put my partial shims in where needed. I think I'll just pull off the C-sharp and attend to that pad right now. With the key off the instrument and the partial shim area marked on the key cup, I'll take my Sharpie once again and continue those marks down the side of the cup. That helps me see it when I'm in this position now, so I don't have to keep flipping it over, because soon I'll have the pad out, and I don't want the partial shims or any other full shims to keep falling out as I'm trying to reference this area. Before I leave this area, I want to mark a shim for a partial, if you will. You can see I've marked a shim that's exactly the same size of that leak. So now I'll glue this partial shim to the full shim under the pad. Before I pull the pad out of the cup, I want to have a mark at the 12 o'clock point on the pad, which is where the arm of the key meets the key cup. This is a permanent mark, so make it small and it'll be mostly invisible. Now let's take the pad out. Oh, you can see that there's already a mark at the 12 o'clock point under, under the washer. I prefer to put it at the edge and I'll explain why. If that pad moves slightly, the mark at the center still looks more or less at the 12 o'clock point, but towards the edge it's moved quite a bit. That little bit will make quite a difference when we're dealing with partial shims and we're getting very exacting. Moving it back into home position. Let's put a needle in the pad and pull the pad out. Very good. You could see that there's a mark locating the 12 o'clock position of the shim under the pad. And we mark the full shim that's closest to the pad. And oftentimes there's several full shims. There may be in this case. Let's see. Yeah, there's a couple there, but they're actually glued together. The partial shim that's glued on top of the full shim will ride with the full shim wherever it goes. So it's important to have this in the right location so that the partial's in the right location. And we're going to be gluing this partial onto this area. And likewise, it's very important for this to remain exactly where we put it and be located right where we want it. I'll just take a little drop of shellac put it on the shim, and I'll carefully, I'll hold the full shim in position as I'm manipulating the partial into position. I'll just hold it for just a moment, and then reset my pad. Now I can put it back on the instrument and check it for coverage.